Hey guys, so you just got yourself a new MacBook and now you're looking to make it even better by adding some useful accessories, or maybe you've been a long time Mac user and you're just looking for some quality of life improvements to it. Whatever the case may be, there are plenty of really great accessories out there and I've put together a list of some of my favorites for you guys today. Let's ramble. Hold up. So yeah, I have some really cool accessories to share with you today, and I thought it would make sense to split them up in two sections. First are the accessories I use when I'm traveling or on the road, and for the second part, I have a list of things I use to make the MacBook an even more powerful and usable tool when I'm here in the office slash studio. So starting off with the travel accessories, this thing is really cool. This is the Omni 40C Plus, which was sent to me a while ago by a company called Omni charge and it's turned out to be such a useful tool. Normally when I'm on the road I'd bring a travel battery, maybe even two, a dongle to hook up everything to my MacBook and an SD card reader for all my video stuff. This thing has all of that built in and it's a beast. With close to 40,000 milliamp battery capacity you will not be running out of juice anytime soon and it has all the ports you could possibly need including a USB-C port delivering 100 watts which means you can charge any MacBook no problem. In fact, you can probably charge it twice with the capacity on this thing. But of course, it also charges pretty much everything else you bring with you. Smartphones, cameras, drones, your Steam Deck, whatever. It even comes with an actual DC port to charge devices you would normally need to plug into the wall. But it's not just a battery, it also functions as a hub, so you can basically turn a single USB-C port on your MacBook into multiple ports on this device. It comes with an SD card reader, which I've personally find extremely useful. My MacBook Pro has one of those built in, but my MacBook Air doesn't. So having a reader built into the Omni 40C Plus really comes in handy. And last but definitely not least, this thing has an HDMI port. So you can hook up your Mac to this device using USB-C and then make it work with any HDMI monitor. It is limited to 4K at 30 Hertz, but hey, to have all of this built into a single device, it's just awesome. It's definitely not what I would consider cheap, but you get what you pay for, and in this case, you're getting a lot. Oh, and before I forget, you can even hook this thing up to a solar charger, which can top up the entire battery in just about three to four hours, making this a great companion for camping trips as well. 10 out of 10 can definitely recommend, and by the way, links to everything you see today in the description below. Staying within the travel category, you're obviously gonna wanna protect your expensive laptop against bumps and scratches, so I would always recommend using a nice case or a sleeve. Personally, I'm a big fan of leather cases, and I keep coming back to these cases by Harbor London, which has become one of my favorite case brands. They're not sponsoring this video, but they do send me some of their cases from time to time to try out, including these two, and that is lucky for me because I would have happily paid for these. For my MacBook Pro, I like to use something a little more robust, preferably with a zipper so it's all tucked away and protected. But for my M3 MacBook Air, which by the way, I've really been enjoying, there's a review on the channel and more coming, so definitely subscribe if you're into that kind of stuff. Anyway, for the Air, I like to keep it light and simple in line with the actual machine. So this simple leather sleeve is definitely my favorite option for that. A case can sometimes be a bit hard to stuff in a backpack, but this sleeve will slide right in, making this a great option for the MacBook Air. Now, these MacBooks are not known for their fantastic webcams, and I do have a lot of Zoom calls with clients and brands, so when I'm on the road, I like to bring this little Tadpole camera with me. It's made by a company called Opal, which is the same company, by the way, that made the C1, which is a camera both Casey Neistat and MKBHD invested in, and it's definitely an improvement over the built-in camera on the MacBook. The fact that it's so tiny and it can just clip onto your MacBook like that makes this the perfect travel webcam for me. Storage is another issue we can run into when traveling, and we all know how obscenely expensive Apple's internal storage is, so that is definitely an area where I like to save a few bucks, going for a lower storage option and then using external SSDs to store all my files. I have a bunch of different ones here, all serving a very different purpose and all in a very different price range. The most accessible and probably the most well-known one is this Samsung T7. It's a tried and true crowd favorite for a reason. It's a relatively affordable one, and very, very reliable. 
Now, a little step up from that is the Samsung T9, which is significantly faster. Although for us Mac users, we'll not reach the maximum advertised speeds because of the type of USB-C port on the MacBook as opposed to a PC, but it's still a lot faster, very good bang for buck option. Now, these two here are Thunderbolt drives, and these are the real deal. The Lassie rugged Thunderbolt SSD and the insanely fast Orico Thunderbolt drive. These drives are definitely at the higher end in terms of pricing, but if you're a video editor and you wanna work straight off of your drive without having to transfer any files to your MacBook first, trust me, these are worth every penny. So those were some of my favorite travel accessories. Now let's move on to the more permanent setup, the desk accessories, if you will. Starting off with the monitor. This is the brand new BenQ PD3225U. Seriously, who comes up with these names? And it's the successor to the PD3220U that I reviewed last year as an alternative to the actual Apple Studio display. And that's been my main monitor at my home office ever since. I absolutely love that thing. It looks great, build quality is great, and the color accuracy is amazing. Very close to the studio display indeed, which as a content creator is a big deal to me. It means I can start editing a video here at the studio, bring the project home, and continue the edit, knowing that the colors will look identical when I get back in the studio to finish the project. Now, as a tech reviewer, I work with a lot of brands, and the way these brands interact with creators and their audiences differs a lot from one brand to another. And that's what I really appreciate about BenQ. They seed the products to us for review, and instead of asking us to tell everyone how great it is, they ask us to give our honest feedback, and they actually take the time to read the comment section. And the result is that this new model comes with a lot of improvements. Based on some of the comments, you guys made. The brightness of the display was boosted from 250 nits to 400 nits. The contrast ratio went from 1000 to 1 to 2000 to 1. And the speaker output has been increased from 2 to 2.5 and watts, giving them a little extra kick. BenQ also replaced the IPS panel with a new IPS black panel, which results in much better black levels. Now, for me personally, there are two things that make a good monitor great. One is the image quality and the other is connectivity. In terms of connectivity, especially in a Mac setup, it doesn't get much easier than this. One single Thunderbolt 3 cable provides an 85 watt connection from the monitor to the MacBook with data transfer speeds of up to 40 gigabits per second. You can even daisy chain two of those monitors together to work in a dual screen setup. Also very useful is the quick access panel on the side of the monitor, offering a 15 watt USB-C port that you can use to you know, charge your iPhone alongside a USB-A port and a 3.5 millimeter jack. Also very useful. Now, like I said, the other key element for me is the image quality and more precisely, color accuracy. A big chunk of the work I do on these monitors will be video editing and color grading. And so I really need to be able to rely on the fact that the colors as I see them on this screen are exactly how people will see them on their MacBooks, their iPads, or their iPhones. And that is where Mac Color Match comes in, especially the M-Book mode, which was designed specifically to match the colors on the MacBooks and minimize any visual differences between the displays. And again, this new IPS black panel helps to bring that even closer. The monitor also comes with BenQ's DisplayPilot 2 software, which makes it very easy to switch between color modes alongside a whole bunch of other features such as dual view, where you can compare different color modes side by side, very useful feature, partitioning your desktop, and you can even set it to auto orientation in case you wanna switch between landscape and portrait mode. And that of course is something I cannot do on my Apple Studio display. In fact, I had to pay several hundreds of dollars more for the tilt and height adjustable stand bringing the grand total of the studio display I'm using to $2,299. And that makes this new BenQ monitor, which comes in at $1,099, a very enticing alternative. Now, personally, when I hook up my MacBook to an external monitor, I almost always do that in clamshell mode. The 14 inch display is just a little too small to serve as a useful secondary display to me. So I'd much rather just move the MacBook out of the way and focus on the external monitor. Currently, I'm using this Walnut Laptop Dock by Belolo. It does what it's supposed to do. It's nice and heavy, matches the aesthetic of my office, and it offers plenty of protection for the MacBook so I don't scratch it up. Belolo did send me their entire setup cockpit, which I'm actually currently using at my home office. That uses a very clever system for attaching accessories. I won't go into detail right now, but I will be dropping a video soon on that setup, so definitely tune in for that. Anyway, they make great stuff, and this dock has been super useful for me. 
You obviously need a keyboard and a mouse combo in a setup like that. And look, I don't wanna bore you by showing you the same mouse and keyboard I've been using for years, but the Logitech MX Master 3 and the MX keys are just hard to beat. Seriously, if you still haven't tried this mouse, please do. I promise you will not be disappointed. It's the most comfortable mouse, hands down. Now, webcams. Not all external monitors have webcams built in, and even when they do, they're usually not very good. Like I said earlier, I have a lot of Zoom calls, so I definitely use an external webcam. I reviewed quite a few of them last year. Most of them were pretty good, but the one I ended up keeping on my monitor here in the studio is the OpsBot Tiny 2. The image quality is great, the app works well, and the tracking on this thing is insane. It's much better than its competitors, even better than the Insta360 Link, which I also like very much, but the Insta360 will lose me before this one does. So right now, this is my go-to webcam for those Zoom calls. But of course, I also wanna make sure that I sound clear and crispy. And while the mics on the MacBook are actually very good, I do use it in clamshell mode, and of course, they will never be as good as an actual mic, which is why I recommend the Shure MV7. This mic sounds incredible. It's basically the baby Shure SM7B, which is the industry standard for podcasting mics, but this one does not require an expensive preamp. You can just hook it up directly to your MacBook using a single USB-C cable, and bam, you've got yourself some studio-grade audio. Again, not the cheapest mic, definitely not the most expensive either, but in my opinion, you get pro-level audio at a mid-level price, and that is a win in my book. Now, getting back to storage. Portable SSDs are cool, but they do generally have a low storage capacity, and of course, you can lose them quite easily, speaking for myself here. But that is why you need to back up all your stuff to at least one additional location, and for me, that is the NAS drive in my office. I recently did a review on this one. It's part of a brand new line of NAS drives by Ugreen, who decided to get into the NAS game as well and hit the ground running with some really premium hardware and a pretty good app that can only get better from here. Two massive advantages a NAS has over portable storage is A, you can make the storage as big as you want. I'm currently running this thing at 49 terabytes of space, and that is with redundancy, meaning that if one drive fails, the data is not lost, and I can just replace the broken drive with a healthy one. And the second advantage is that you can access the NAS anywhere in the world, as long as you have an internet connection, which is not only useful for myself, but it's also a fantastic solution if you're working on a project with one or more team members who can and all log in and work on the same files. All right, guys, I hope you found some nice options in this video. If you did, please give it one of these. It really does help my channel. Subscribe for more content. Thank you so much for watching and see you in the next one.